Hey everyone, welcome back to Plugin Dev 101 Part 2. I hope you all are having an excellent day. If you haven't seen the first video, go ahead and watch that first. I'm going to link to it in the description below. This is where we're going to continue building our to do plugin for Strapi 4. So let's jump right into it and see what we're going to cover in this video. So first, let's do a quick UI overview to see which components we're going to build for our to-do plugin. Next, we're going to take a look at Strapi Design System, learn what it is and why you must use it when building a plugin for Strapi 4. After that, we're going to jump in and go in more detail of the admin folder in our plugin application to see where we're going to be writing and adding our components. Then we're going to slowly ease our way into making changes in our plugin by replacing an icon in our navigation. And I'll show you how to find the icons in our Strapi design system. And finally, we're going to build our first component. Let's do a quick overview to see which components we're going to build for our to-do plugin. Our plugin is going to have four main components. We're going to start with the empty state where basically if there's no to do, this is what the user is going to see first. They'll be able to click the button to add a new to do. When they click that button, it's going to open up a modal window where you could add the name of your to do and save it. And the final last two components is going to be our to do count component, which will display the count of all the to do's that we have, as well as our table, which will not only allow you to add new to do's to the list, but allow you to check the to do when it's done, edit the to do or delete it. We're going to now take a look at Strapi Design System and how it will allow us to build our UI components fast while maintaining our UI consistency with the rest of our application. You can learn more about Strapi Design System by going to design-system.strapi.io. Now, if you're not familiar with what is a design system, a design system is a collection of pre-built reusable asset-like components and patterns that allow you to build your UI fast while maintaining maintaining consistency with the rest of the application. You could take a look and read about the principles used, typography, grid system, and all the additional information when you like. But we're going to jump right into and take a look at the components. When you click the link, it's going to take you to storybooks where you will be able to see all the pre-made components that you have available to you. And what's awesome, because under the hood, they use style components, you could add additional styling by extending it with the use of style components. And let's take a look at the example here. If you could see the search bar component here and you could take a look at the docs, it will tell you how to import it into your program as well as a couple of different options that are available. See the code for you to pull to use in your project as well as what props you should be able to pass. And what's awesome, when you start a Strapi project, all of this is already in there by default. So before getting our hands dirty, let's take a look and review the folder structure of our plugin front end by checking out the admin folder. Once you open the project in your favorite code editor, which we all know is VS Code, let's take a look at the code. Open the source folder, let's go to plugins, and here we are in our to-do plugin folder. Today we're going to be spending most of our time in the admin folder because we're working on the front part of our application. Here's our components folder. This is where we're going to place all of our React components as we make him. Here's the initializer index file, which basically sets up our plugin and that gets called in our index file in the register function, which we get to in just a second. Then we'll take a look at pages. We have our app page, which sets up our initial routing. And if we wanted to add additional routes, we could do so here. And then we have our home page, which is basically where we're going to be writing all of our code today. We don't need many pages. We're just going to work in this one view. Then we have our translation translations where we could eventually add our translations, which we're not going to talk about in this tutorial. And we have our util folder with helpful utility functions that we can use. And now here we are in our index.js, which is the entry point of your application. Here we have our register function where we register our plugin in the navigation. We have our register plugin function that initializes the initializer component that we saw earlier. And then we have our bootstrap function that allows us to add additional functionality like standing another plugin or registering a hook that allows us to add additional custom functionality that we would like to run. 
but the best way to learn about this is not just me telling you, but to use some of the resources that you have available. And for plugin development, the best place is our plugin resources. If you go to plugin API reference guide, open that up and you will see that we are in our admin folder working with our admin API for our plugin. Click that and it's going to take you to the appropriate place in the documentation where you could learn about everything we were just talking about. You could learn more about the register function, the bootstrap function, and so on. So make sure that you know that documentation is your friend. And this is a great place to get additional resources when following tutorials such as this one. Now that we're familiar with the basics of plugin development, or at least the folder structure, let's jump in and start building our plugin. We're going to start nice and simple and replace our icon in our navigation. Make sure that you have your application running. And if you take a look here on our to-do menu item, we have a puzzle icon. So let me first show you where to find icons and then I'll show you where to replace this in code. So when building your plugin for Strapi 4, we must use Strapi design system for our UI. You could learn more about it, but if we go to iconography, we could see all the different icons that we have available to us. If we click components, it's going to take us to this link, which which will take us to storybooks. Now, it's not really apparent where to find the icons exactly, but I'll show you where. You go into theme, icons, and now you have a list of icons that you could choose from. So let me close that window, and we're going to use this brush icon. When you click on it, it's going to copy the import. So let's go back into the code, and I'll show you where to implement it. Now that we are in our code, we're going to go to our source, our plugins to our admin folder. That's where all of the front end magic will happen. We're going to select components because we have this plugin icon. We're going to click it, go into the index file. Now I'm going to replace the puzzle import with our brush import, delete this, and we're going to replace this with our brush item. Now, when we go back to our application and we refresh the screen, our icon doesn't change. Whenever you're working on the front end portion of your Strapi application or plugin, whenever you run Yarn Develop, that does not rebuild the UI. And that is required for you to see the changes that you make. So first, what we're going to do, I'm going to show you a command that you should use instead. So let's stop our server. And instead of using yarn develop, we are actually going to add a flag called watch admin. This will allow you to run your application in watch mode in localhost port 8000, which will rebuild your application every time you make changes. So let's take a look. I'm going to log in first. And if we take a look, look at our to-do item, it is now our brush that we used. And now whenever I make any changes to our components, we could see them change in real time rather having to restart the application, running yard build and then yarn develop. So let's take a look. So here I am back in my code editor. Let's go back to our plugin page in our home page in the index file, we're now going to say happy strappy and see the changes. And now, as you could see, without having to reload, we could see our changes. So now let's go ahead and build our first component. And when I say build, I really mean using the power of strappy design system as building blocks like Lego pieces to put our components together. So let's take a look first what we're going to do. So for brevity of the tutorial, I'm just going to paste the code here and explain to you what we're doing. What we're doing here is we're getting a layout component from Strapi Design System. We're setting a base header, which takes three props, titles, subtitles, and how we want to render this component. And then we have our content layout component wrapper, where we could put the rest of our content. And where did I find this code? This is where I found all the components that I used. You could click on layout, and I know this looks busy, but you could go into docs. It shows you where to import the component from, and it will show you the code examples that they used. So I used the layout component from here. We also had a content layout component that I'm using to wrap our content. So all of them are here. And if this looks too busy for you, one tip for you guys is you could literally click view source and check out all the components. And we actually used the base component from header layout. So if I click header layout here and scroll down, you guys will see there's going to be a base header layout that's being exported. And you could do that as well. And sometimes for some of these base components, you might not find them in the search here. I know for header layout, it is here. So 
header layout and we have our base component example here. So if I look at the show code here, they show an example of how to use it. So just in case, if you feel like you can't find something, don't be shy looking at the source code. So now you could see that all of our components come from Strapi design system. So when we go back to our application and you see something like this, I'm importing those components from Strapi design system and I'm using them in my code. And so instead of writing the code from scratch, you really want to rely on using Strapi design system. And since this code is running, let's take a look what it looks like for us. And bam, we have a nicer view. And the best part is that most of these components are already pre-built for us. So instead of focusing on trying to recreate the wheel from scratch, we rely on Strapi design system, not only to make our developer experience better, but also keep consistency in our application. Oh my gosh, that was a long video, but we made it. Congratulations to you. I know that's a lot, but I wanted to make sure that we covered the most important basics, even though they might seem too basic, but I want you guys to know where to find all the resources that will help you to be able to continue learning about developing Strapi plugins all on your own. So what did we achieve today? We took a look at Strapi design system and why you must use it. We took a deeper dive into an admin folder and learn about the best place to find all the resources sources for any of our additional questions that we have. And we also built out our first component. But if you are really, really stuck, we do have our Discord community and our forum where you could talk to real people. And in the next video, we're going to continue building out the front end layout. We're going to finish it. We're going to finish all the basic logic so we could finally dive into building the back end of our plugin. So I'm excited to see you in the next video. And with that being said, I just want to say thank you so much for joining me. I really appreciate your time and I hope that you're finding value in these videos. And again, this is really targeted to beginners just starting out with plugin development. So I'm trying to cover all the resources that you have available for you to succeed. And you could always find me on Twitter at Coding30, but more importantly, subscribe to this YouTube channel because we're releasing videos more frequently now and you'll be able to keep learning cool things about Strapi and development in general. So with that being said, I'll see you in the next video.